so if you have a three dimensional model for example this one this is one floor then this is second floor like this and let's say it is a three story building so it's have three floors like this so if it is a three dimensional model then uh, and you let's say that you assume that each of the story have a lumped mass located at the center so each of the story have one lumped mass which is located at the center of mass of that story so you have m1 uh, you have here somewhere here m2 and let's say this is the third mass m3 right so the the if you use the rigid diaphragm option or rigid diaphragm constraint the program is going to uh, constrain all those nodes uh, at that particular level the the program is going to connect them with a rigid link and that rigid link is between all those nodes at that level and that master node which it create at the center of mass right so let's say it this story top floor have four masses four four um, you can say masses as well as uh, the four nodes and the each node will have a corresponding nodal mass right if we assign a rigid diaphragm constraint all those four nodal masses will be combined to get one mass at the center of mass and all those four nodes will be uh, connected with a rigid link so that will not be by the way visible to you but actually it is connecting all the nodes of that floor uh, with the master node <coughs> with a rigid link rigid link is an element which has infinite stiffness which means that now those nodes are dependent on the their displacement is dependent on the master node right so those nodes are called slave nodes and the master node is created at the center of mass right so whatever displacement your master node is going to have all the slave nodes will have the same displacement in lateral direction because of that rigid link right this concept is called constraints and it is not limited only to floor you can constrain any two nodes or any set of nodes uh, in any direction right depending upon uh, if you want to model some real behavior which can be captured by the use of these constraints concept one of the examples of this constraint is that rigid diaphragm right so now that master node can have maximum 6 degrees of freedom right because any node in a finite element environment can have 6 uh, degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom of uh, slave nodes now depend on this mo this master node so we only have to have these 6 degrees of freedom for that story only right three translations three rotations now generally the rotational stiffness of a diaphragm or slab in in the bending direction is quite large and we are mostly interested in the in plane rotation of that diaphragm right so let's say that at this node if we have let's say three axes like this x then y and then the vertical axis or the elevation axis is z so for that diaphragm we will be mostly interested in r z how the diaphragm rotate about the vertical axis and the two translational axis which are two horizontal directions right so maybe ux uy and rz these are the three degrees of freedom in which we want to perform the dynamic analysis or in which we want to calculate the displacements how much that diaphragm sway in x direction how much sway in y direction how much it rotate about the vertical axis right sometimes we are also interested in performing the dynamic analysis uh, about uh, in the vertical direction also in that case we may include uz also right up down movement of diaphragm also right so if we uh, we use for example only horizontal direction analysis then each degree of freedom of that uh, that that master node actually the number of degrees of freedom will be 3 so 
program in this three three story building uh, in both directions will be able to calculate nine modes right and those nine mode or uh, in those nine modes if the building is perfectly symmetric there will be three modes in x direction uh, first second third mode in x direction three modes in y direction corresponding to the three y directional degrees of freedom and three modes in torsion corresponding to this r z degree of freedom located at three different levels right so the program will calculate nine modes in this case and out of those nine modes you have to yourself decide by animating it and or by checking its modal mass that which is the first mode in x direction which is the second mode in y which is the third mode in for example any other direction so maybe first fourth and seventh mode is the first second third mode in x direction second fifth or uh, eighth mode may be in the y direction first second third mode and third similarly third and other two maybe ninth mode or first second third mode in the torsional direction right so uh, but this will be changed if we include vertical mass in that case this uz mass will also be included in the mass matrix formulation and program will calculate vertical modes also right so there will be a mode in which the program will be going up and down uh, the the uh, the model will be going up and down in that mode shape right so there can be a vertical mode shape also if you include vertical mass in the analysis and eat apps provide you that option you can simply click on one check box to include the vertical mass in the analysis you must include it if you want to perform the time history analysis in vertical direction right otherwise the time history analysis will will all be zero right it will not give you any results if the vertical mass is ignored so by default it is ignored unless you check that option in e tabs to include it 